Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Believe in Tennessee Football. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Ferguson, joined with Reed Bacon. It's a different backdrop again. We, I am in Knoxville right now. Me and Reed just got done uh, watching a practice, and we're going to break down the defense today. Every position, D-line, linebackers, DBs, what's the good stuff we saw, what's the bad stuff we saw, what do we think the future's going to look like, who's going to be playing, who's going to be starting, uh, just a lot of great information and, you know, picking out players we think are going to be the best. So, great podcast. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it, but uh, let's jump into it. The game. Snap, the kick is in the air, and the kick this time is no, sir, Reed. No, sir, Reed. Final score, Tennessee 20, Florida 17. Pandemonium reigns. Looks, loads up, fires long for the end zone. The pass is going to be caught by Tennessee. Tennessee wins! Caught it by Tennessee, Jawan Jennings. Jennings makes the catch in the end zone on the Hail Mary. Down at the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. What did he do? All he did was score. Joey Pitt. Touchdown on play number one. All right, so before we jump into the podcast, got to shout out our presenting sponsor, as always, betonline.ag. You know it. I've said it. Every podcast, it's the place to go for any of your betting on any sport, anything out there. They got all the news, the stats, the odds that you were looking for. Heck, they got stuff on gold medal uh, things that are going on in the Olympics. Um, baseball that's in full swing, golf, everything. So if you know you're looking to bet on anything, that's the place to go. So uh, you you know sign up online or use your mobile device and get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Uh, so that's betonline.ag. So before the next tip off, face off, or pitch, head on over to betonline.ag today. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts all right got to shout out a new sponsor uh, balance seven so it is a, a ph balancing alkaline supplement that you know just helps boost you earn your energy helps keep you hydrated all that kind of stuff it's uh you know something that you can really use when you're working out when you're trying to get healthy um so it's perfect it's awesome uh so cool thing is we've got a promotion running with balance seven right now where if you go to their website, balance7.com, and use the code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, at checkout, you'll receive a free four-ounce bottle of My Smooth Skin with any purchase of Balance 7 products. Uh, That product retails for $13.99, so I'd say it's worth it. Uh, Again, head to balance7.com and use the code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, at checkout, and get in on the promotion. I know I will. All right, welcome in everybody. Got another exciting podcast here for you. We're together again. Reed, how we doing? Well, what a day, what a day, uh, what a good day. It was awesome, it's great to see you again. We're here in Knoxville, my humble abode. That's right. And uh, yeah, so we just went to practice this morning, was over there, and now we're gonna just kind of regurgitate and just exactly. freaking vomit everywhere with information. <laughs> I mean, sir, that's how I feel. I just feel like my brain is running in like nine million directions. I know. I, I like tried to take down as many notes as I could while I was there, but it was just like, there's so much to take in, like trying to watch offense, but then also trying to watch defense. And like, I get caught up watching the offensive line a lot. Oh, we know. I was going to, my joke, my joke <laughs> of the podcast was like, if I wasn't doing this podcast with you, these people would have no idea about anything <laughs> at all besides offensive linemen. Yeah. You watch nothing but offensive linemen. I know. I love it. I fuck, I just love it. I love to get in the nitty gritty of it. So that's how see but, their technique. I know. I know. But see, that's what, and that's what's what I. We're not there trying to like dissect this team, like pick them apart, which we're gonna try to do the best we can. But like, we both just love ball. Like, I'm just there, like, you're watching, you're getting fired up, you're wanting to help 
coach or talk to what you were. You know, you were talking to some of the alignment in between different stuff and different drills. I caught myself on seven on seven. One of the DBs came up, made a nice little lick, and I'm like, let's go, boy. Like, I mean, I just, <laughs> yeah, you get thank goodness, it. thank goodness I was way, I always try to stay way back because I like to see, mm. I don't, I feel like I don't get to watch as much and see stuff develop if I'm kind of up close. Yeah. So sometimes I was up close, like right there on the drill with you when we were watching some O-line, D-line, but all the DBs or all the team stuff, I try to stay back. But I just catch myself, I mean, like right in front of me today, um, I don't remember what receiver it was, but it was during team, and I think Joe Milton had rolled out and kind of like the play probably would have been dead. He's probably not making the throw in the game, but he just kind of like threw it up. Yeah. And it was right there in front of me in the the, the field closest to the uh, baseball field, and um, and it was just so like I just like I loved it. Like I I loved it. I saw it, and I guess it was I think it was George. Yeah. George Jr. Number five. Yeah, yeah. Um, who went up and made a really good play picked it off or batted it away and like I just was like I literally wanted to like go and slap him on the head yeah be like let's go good play way to stay at home way to be there <laughs> yeah. and it's just like you can't do that but then it was funny because I watched coach Martinez come up and like I would I feel like I feel like if I was a coach I'd be like coach Martinez because he's like I like how he like he yells and he kind of like tell you, but he's just so much more like there's no reason to be like some of these other coaches just dog you out. Like he's going to like, he literally went up to like a couple of these guys after they made good plays in the defensive backfield and like puts his arm around him like, hey, good shit, boy. Like yeah. taps him on the head, like gives him a legit hug. Like I, I just so you, love. I so just, you don't think you'd be like Rodney Garner? <laughs> That boy Rodney. Listen, today we're talking about defense. Like this first five, we're going to be talking about defense. And that man, Rodney Garner, runs a tight ship. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> I mean, that guy is – I mean, honestly, the guy could, like, have his, like, own TV show. He's very entertaining. Yeah, he's if very you're out, If you are not a player underneath him, he's very entertaining. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. He kills them. Kills them. So, I guess to give you guys some feedback um, – we went, we watched all of practice. We were there until, I mean, we waited till like the very end of the end. Yeah. Um, we left, we got us some nice nectar, some nice. Shout, Nixon. Out, shout out nectar, no free shout out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nixon's Deli, we came back here, set up, and now we're just gonna talk. Obviously we know everyone wants to know about the quarterback. Everyone wants to know about the offense. We're gonna get there. We're gonna record twice, or yes. we're probably just gonna talk for about two straight hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll be it'll be two different podcasts. I mean, I feel confident saying that I think I know who's gonna be the starter. I do too. I, I mean, I really yeah, do. I mean, the starting watching. quarterback. But yes. like, I'm almost burnt out of tired of asking and talking about it. Like, I there's there's you know so many other things are going on in this team. Yeah, and I mean, it is like we said before. Like, whoever wins. They deserve it. Like, if they won out of all of this competition, then they're d- dang good. Yeah. Well, like, I just think – I just trust Heupel on offense. I, I swear, like, I feel like the guy could, like, you know, put one of us out there and he's still going to get production just because of, like – he. I just think – I mean, that's what he played. That's what he's done. He does offense. He knows quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I'm just not – I'm not worried about – the, the quarterback. I'm not worried about the, the receivers. I'm not worried about the running backs. Yeah. It's, no. it's, there's so many other things. So it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to about quarterbacks, but you know, we at least have to do somewhat to try to be decent podcasters or whatever the heck we are so that we keep people coming back. That's right. You so, got to hey, listen to this one and then listen to the next one. Cause you're so excited about the quarterback. Yeah, exactly. So, or just, Zoom ahead and whatever. But. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, day was great. And another thing I kind of want to start off before we dive into defense is – and I'm – like, we definitely mean this in, like, no ill will because, like, we've had Dan on our show. Yeah. From, uh, Dan um, from USA Today. We got to meet him today. Yeah. He's a great dude. Like, I liked him. I called you after we podcasted with Big Dan. Shout out. And I said, I really like him. Good dude, good guy. Like, I if you haven't him. already seen it, go back and watch or listen to that podcast with Dan Harrelson. It was, it yes, was a good one. Yes, and it was good. So we got to see him today. But it was funny. The last time we went, we parked on, like, the other side and came through the football complex. And uh, I was with, with Coach uh, Scott Altizer. And, by the way, he's great as always to Kyler and all the, all the VFLs. But – um, this time we just walked through the media and it was funny because they were all waiting out there to get their little press passes and the dude just 
we stand out there for like two minutes, talk to him, and the dude opens the door and he's like, all right, Kyler. Yeah. And then Kyler turns around and is like, waves me on like, I'm a, you know, I'm his little puppet. <laughs> and the guy opening the door is like, I have no idea who this guy is, but he's with Kyler, so whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so we get to go in and, and we get to watch practice. And like I said, those guys work hard. All those media guys, they work hard and they're doing the best they can. Like, just like, and the only reason we know this is because we see it. But, like, those – the media guys don't see a lot at all. No. So, it's like I just don't think they sh- – like, people should take – To heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, don't don't just be like, oh, my God, we're going to be terrible. Oh, my gosh, we're going to be great. Because those guys literally see ba- basically warm-ups. Yep. Basically warm-ups, like, you know, routes on air, some different mesh handoff stuff, some different stuff like that, and then they're gone. And then they come back, I guess, later – to do interviews yeah but it's just like um and like i said that's no i guess if we are trying to be competitive and different then that's why we have well kyler has a different advantage and i'm just a tag along because he played there so you get to see all this stuff and so we want to bring that to you guys but you know i guess that is a little bit of competitive nature is like pay attention to us (laughs) yeah we know more yeah yeah not them but um anyway so great day we showed up and it was just a great day to be outside and just be around the program. Um, I'll say this too: I love. I thought the guys worked really hard. And Kyler and I were sitting there laughing and joking a bunch because we're watching these guys, and they are just—they're just so out of it. Like you so feel miserable. You, they're miserable, 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 and you just feel so bad for him because he—he he obviously was in camp for for UT five years and then yeah. the NFL and then I had my time at Memphis. It's like, you remember those times and you're like, dude, this, it's the worst thing. It's, it's the it's, worst. It's still the worst the thing I've ever. Practice is just awful. It's the worst, like going through camps are the worst thing I've ever done. Yeah. But it's like you and I were like over there kind of laughing and stuff because we just felt bad for these guys. Like we know how they feel. Um, but that's where I'm going to start and say, I just really, really, really appreciated how hard these guys were working. Mm-hmm. I, and I can't compare to Dooley. I can't compare to Butch. I can't compare to Prude. I wasn't there watching it. Yeah. So I don't know how the environment was, but I feel like all these guys work hard. And these guys really do support each other. And, like, I know when I was in sports, if I went against some, someone on, like, a one-on-one drill trying to guard somebody or getting off a block or whatever the safeties did, I was trying to murder the guy next to me. And just how I'm wired, like – if he beat me, I'm definitely not, like, patting him on the butt. And if I beat him, I'm definitely not probably, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I felt like these guys were just, like, they're all there working to try to get better. Um, I feel like I've been rambling on, so I want you to take over. But how did you feel about, like, what you see about the environment-wise? Because I do feel like the coaches – well, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead. There, I, I do think there was a lot of conversation – had between players even on opposite sides of the ball on the same side of the ball like just trying to understand the game more talking about what they're doing like and even coach Heupel at the very end when he brought up everybody he pointed it out he was like um I think it was it was Jalen and Trey and Trey Flowers he goes goes, y'all went against each other and immediately started talking to each other right after and being like oh okay what, what what could I have done? What could I have done differently? What, like, would you, like, and just trying to understand the game more or just like putting some respect on what the other one did. And I mean, honestly, it shows a lot of like b- being humble and like growth to be like, what, what is my weakness? That that's such like a big thing that people need to realize. Like the only way you're going to get better is if you understand your weakness. So if you're going against these guys, you understand your weakness and uh, it's funny, and I'll say this. I went up to uh, Byron Young, which I am so excited about him, and we'll get into deep, deeper detail about that. But I went up to him, introduced myself. He had seen that I called him out in the podcast prior and said he was going to be a great player. And I was like, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you make Darnell and Cade better for me? Like, can you make them work hard? Can you make them better players? Because the only way they're going to get better is if you push them. And the only way you're going to get better is if they push you. And you're meaning so they know, like, one-on-ones, team, one on one's, anytime team, you guys are going everything. Up, yeah. You're giving your best so they get better. Because if you're not giving your best and they can take a play off or be lazy on a play, they will because yeah. they're tired. Right. And then it's like, 
okay, that play was worthless. Nothing happened on that play. Right. Because, you didn't, I mean, you don't get anything out of it. And I'm like, go out there and embarrass them as best as you can. Like, trying to embarrass them on film to where it's like, they're going to get called out in film. They're going to get called out and stuff being like, are you giving your full effort here? Right. Are you actually trying to be better here? If you're not, then let's fix that. Right. Just holds them accountable. That's literally what it is. It's holding them accountable. So what did you think about, what's the, what was the environment like compared to, I guess, when you were there under Butch? Like, I, I, I just, I guess the, what I'm trying to say is like, I felt like it was more when I was there, when I was playing, or what I'm kind of more used to is like, and especially in camp, like you, like we've said on this podcast, like you hate the other guy against yeah. you because you're just, you're tired of it. Like you're tired against going the same guy. Like I was tired of all of our receivers, always chirping, always talking junk, like always the yep. same, same nonsense prima donnas. Yep. And then they were probably tired of us being, or me being some like try hard or like, you know, or some of our other DBs, like, you know, getting handsy with them or whatever. And you're tired of guarding some of the other, you know, blocking the defense alignment. So I always felt like it was like, just kind of like combative. Like I said, if I was going on a one-on-one with somebody, like I legitimately like can't stand that guy. Mm -hmm. But these guys, man, it was cool. Like they were going hard and they were doing the best they can, but then they were like picking guys up and like, I mean, in a uh, team drill, I think uh, Morvin Joseph made a good play at linebacker and threw one, you know, made a tackle, maybe like, you know, slung one of the guys to the ground, but then immediately like, tried to pick him back yeah. up, like hit his head. I just thought it was cool to see. It, it's it's it's. So like how the, was it under Butch? It's like the there's no there's no fights. You know, yeah, where it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, okay, you guys are you know mm -hmm. showing mutual respect. You're not like turning it into a fight. You're mm -hmm. just giving full effort when you're when you have a rep. You're giving full effort, mm -hmm. but you're not like making it a fight. Um, I think it's a lot different than under Butch because the practices with Butch, it's like he's always there. He's got that microphone and he's screaming in the microphone, saying something every five minutes, just like... Oh, probably like stirring the pot a little bit. Stirring the pot, all like all the time. You know, are you giving your best effort? Or, you know, just calling out people from across the field. Yeah. So like that kind of gets just old really quick. And I think that did happen with a lot of guys who are just like, I can't put up with this crap anymore. With Hypel, it's like... I didn't even really notice that he was out there, mm -hmm. which is so different than Butch. Like, yeah. so much different. And I think he likes to sit back and understand as much as possible. And he knows what he's good at. He knows what he's good at coaching. It's quarterbacks. It's wide receivers. It's offense. He's not going to go over there and try and coach up the offensive line because that's the O-line coach's job. Mm -hmm. He's not going to throw D line. That's a D line coach job. He's not gonna like. Mm -hmm. He's not gonna coach positions that it's not his fucking job. Right. Right. Where Butch would come over while we're doing, you know, the sled and start like yelling at us. Yeah. And it's like, all right, bro. Like. And let's say this, and I know that you're not talking any or ill will towards Butch or any of those guys. No. And I will also say, as much as I didn't like Butch because I thought he was just a used car salesman. I, as, as a fan, I don't care how you do it. As long as you win, I'm fine with it. So if you, and so we're not trying to say, well, Hypo is going to be great. Because he does it this way. Correct, yeah. correct, correct. So if you want to have a microphone, then that's you, just be you. And that's how you coach. But I, I felt the same way about Hypo. Like, I felt like I was there for a while and didn't even notice him until he just ran right by me to, like, they were going to a drill. And then, like, I mean, he's just very, like you said, I feel like he sits back, he watches. Obviously, he's definitely coaching up because he watches and he goes and he makes his points and he tells different stuff. But yeah. I, I would like to play for a guy like that because, like I said, as I've gotten older, like, there's no reason to just dog somebody out, yeah, in my opinion. Sometimes in my opinion. there's just, like, too many highs, too many lows where a coach is just like, so pissed off after just, like, one little thing. It's, bro. Yeah, right, I, and I, I just, okay. I just, yeah, I just don't like that. Like, I just don't like that. Like, if I was ever a coach, would I like maybe would I get a little bit pissed and frustrated and yell and stuff like that? Yeah, probably. But I'm not gonna like demean somebody, and then I'm just more getting hype. So like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's that's like more of a reward than a punishment. Like that's what you want. Yeah, yeah, and so, um, so that, but yeah, hypo was obviously he was very engaged and stuff like that. But 
I felt like you said like he was definitely a good CEO type. Yeah. But then when it comes to the quarterbacks, offense, you yeah, know, like like delegate. Let yeah. your coaches coach. Yeah. Don't don't step up, step on their toes. I did like tour, I did like too at the end of practice when he was talking to the whole team and he was like, "This is accountability from everybody." He was like, because he called out players by name mm-hmm. to give examples. He said, like, I'm not calling him out. I'm just using him example type deal. That goes for all 120 players and every coach here. Like, we all – you know what I mean? Yes. So, um, but, yeah, no, so – Let's get into the defense. Yeah, because we could just – Yeah, we, yeah, we, we really have a million – Yeah, we have so much <laughs> um, So, we'll just so start I, at D-line. Yeah, we'll or, just start with the big big hog mollies up front. And okay. we already talked about Rodney Garner and who he is. I mean, I feel like we have to talk about the end of practice – before we talk about practice, but you know, what we just heard from the scrimmage was defensive line killed it. They were going all out. They were doing a really good job. I mean, we even talked to people there today, said the defensive line was awesome at the scrimmage, you know, and sometimes it's more about like the effort you're putting forth than the skill set that you have, especially on defense. And still, Ronnie Garner is on them. All day long, and then in the practice, they have up downs. They have mm-hmm. cross field sprints with pads on. I mean, I felt absolutely horrible for them. It's probably you know near ninety degrees at this point. They've been practicing for two and a half hours, and they got to do that kind of stuff. We, it's true. Kyler and I, <clears throat> so. We were watching practice. They were doing team. Then they called up. Butch talked to everybody. Then everyone breaks out. Heifel. What did I you said Butch. Oh, yeah. yeah sorry, <laughs> sorry. So, yeah. So, Coach Heifel calls everybody up. They talk. And then everyone breaks apart. And they go individuals. Mm-hmm. And the difference between your day <laughs> compared to what position you are, I mean, I looked over and you had receivers. They met. I loved it. They got a prayer in. And, and they met. And they talked. And... Some of them went and they started getting some – some. Uh, they had some little ice cream out there for them. Um, some of them were kind of taking their stuff off, just resting, just happy that the practice is over. Some were getting an ice tub. Some were doing the jugs machine. Yeah. Some were doing the jugs machines with, tennis like, balls. tennis balls, catching. And so they were still doing some stuff. But it just seemed like a nice, relaxing way to end practice. And then you had your quarterbacks and they were meeting up and then they were doing their band work for their shoulders and all that stuff. It's like, okay. And then you look over and you see the linebackers on the other field and they're running gassers. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> like that's I'm worse. like, no, that is brutal. And then I look over and they're circling up. Helmets in the middle, yeah, circled up. Around Rodney Garner, the D-line. And I was like, oh, God, Kyler, I hope Start they're not. your feet. I was like, I hope they're not. I was like, I watched this, bro. I said, I think they got up downs. And, you, and then you're like, oh, yeah. And I was like, wait, wait, no, maybe not. Because I was like, maybe they're just meeting. Or well, I said, no, I bet they're going to work on hand placement and some hand stuff. No. <laughs> no. No, they started chopping them. They started chopping them. And my gosh, he, he was just up down them. And it was funny because we could debate sometime. Because I said, I'd rather be doing up downs compared to being a linebacker and having to do like cross field, so 50 yard sprints down and back. And so we were arguing. You were like, no, give me sprints all day. Yeah. Sure. So we're standing there and we're just kind of watching this and they're doing up downs and they're doing up downs. Well, heck, by this time, the quarterbacks are going in, getting their post workout food or whatever. I ice mean, bath. we had a good 10 minute conversation with Kevin Simon. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Special K. Yeah, exactly. And during that time, they were doing up downs. Correct. I forgot about that. Yeah. We, we look back over. And they go to the line. And they go to the line. Then they start doing sprints across the field. Yeah. Down and back. Yeah. So it's like quarterbacks, they're done. Receivers, they're done unless they're doing jugs. Linebackers are done running. I don't know what the running backs or tight ends or what No they're alignment doing. out there anymore. They no, met. I didn't see. They I, met, they prayed, and they got out. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Y'all know, I didn't see the O-line. I didn't see the running backs. I have no idea where the DBs went. I think they were all just chilling by that time. And my gosh, I forgot. We talked to Special K, Kevin Simon, for a good five to ten minutes. Yeah. And, and they, they, stopped, they, stopped, they, stopped, they stopped doing up-downs and start walking to the side. I'm like, man, I'm so happy for those big boys. I'm like, they're done. Like, I'm like fantasizing in my brain for them. I'm like, all right, go get, go get in the ice tub and just cool off, big fella. Then get you a shower and go get you a nap and some food. Yeah. No, they weren't done. They were going to the line for spin, for sprints. 
And, Brutal. And poor Caleb, uh, poor Caleb from <laughs> USC was looking like he was just done. And, of course, Rodney Garner hit him with the – this, welcome come on. to the SEC. He said, come on, Caleb. He like, this ain't the SEC. Or he goes, he goes, welcome to the SEC. He says, this ain't no Pac-10, Pac-12. He's like, get on the line. <laughs> I mean, he just wears them, wears them out. So I just felt, I mean, I felt terrible for those big fellas. But anyways, let's get into what we actually saw. So what yeah. did you see against one-on-ones? And we're talking D line here, so yeah, we're, we're talking D line. So I'm gonna try and like not say as many O line things as I can. Um, I just I love the way that Rodney Garner coaches them. I love his coaching points towards the defensive line and being like, like here's the technique that you need to win on that rep. Like, what kind of pass rush move are you working? Are you using the technique properly? Like, I think it was. Um, I think it was Byron Young, but I can't remember. It might have been someone else, but got Cade on a great, like, fake speed outside and then was able to strong arm his inside peck and, like, lift him. Yeah. And that's just like a it, – it's a great setup move because he's using his out, using Cade's outside shoulder and making Cade think, hey, I'm speed rushing the whole way. Like, I'm going outside, I'm going outside – and kind of like tricking him and getting inside shoulder and inside leverage on him. So it's just like little stuff like that. The technique of it is good. I thought a lot of them were able to keep the offensive lineman on them too. Because that's a big thing in run stop and in, in, in the run game is don't let the offensive lineman get to the linebackers. Because linebackers are the ones that are most likely going to be making the play. The defensive lineman, it's like make sure the double team stays on you. Right. And that happened a lot where there were some clogged holes. Like, I, that was one thing that I wasn't – I didn't like as much when I was watching offensive line was the line of scrimmage being moved. Right? Like, is it moved one to two yards into the defense? If it's not, that's not – like, if it's a stalemate, it's not good. The defense is – that's a defensive win. Right. And I saw that a few times where it's like defense was just stalemating the O-line up front. And it, I mean – Ones, twos, threes didn't matter. Like, it was happening. Um, and it, it's just so tough because you're like, is the, is the offensive line bad or is the defensive line playing good? Like, did they do good or did they do bad? Right. So, it's, it, it is hard to tell in certain instances. Um, but I really like I, – I mean, I like the effort they had out there. I like that Rodney Garner is hard on them. I, I feel as if they don't have – there's a drop off when it comes from ones to twos, like a significant, and that kind of worries me. Um, and then, you know, the guys I was excited to watch was the transfers, and I don't like, I've lost 50 pounds since I played, and I still think I could beat those guys. Yeah. Like, I, like no disrespect to them, but like, Terry did not look as big as I thought he would. So Caleb I, definitely didn't look as big as I thought he could be. So, <clears throat> yeah, and it's different because you played and you are a big individual and you played offensive and defensive line. Now, obviously, I'm very average size, but I was around a lot of big guys. Yeah. And so, for me, I try to walk when I'm at practice. I try to walk up close to these people, and I want to feel like, dang. I want to feel like, dang, this yes. is this is a put together dude. Yeah, Caleb from USC. I mean, I thought he was like kind of little. Yeah, honestly, it like felt I, like that. Yeah, it felt it just felt like that. And then like Dejon Terry, I kind of even forgot about him. And then we get to practice and we're watching those like kind of one on one, two on two. They're working on like stunts and picking up different stuff. And, yeah. They were like, and I think we literally asked like, oh, line, we're like, I think you were like, who's 95? And they're like, that's DT, it's DeJon Terry. And you and I looked at each other like, WTF, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, dude. We're like, that's him? Like, I, it, it says he's 325. I was like, that yeah, guy. It, looks- says he's, it says he's 6'4, 325. I legitimately, this is, I, now, I, the closest I got to him was maybe within five yards, but he legitimately, if someone had told me he, this guy was six foot, like, 290, I would have been like, okay. Like, he was, he <laughs> yeah. was, so he was the lead. If he's 6'4, which I don't think there's any way, 
He's the least – like, he was one of the least imposing 6'4", 325 people I've ever seen. Now, that's my fault for expecting, like, Dan McCullers yeah. type, type deal. Yeah, exactly. Type deal. But, like, I was just like, wait, what? Yeah. I mean, it was just like – it was funny because I felt like in spring practice, I was, like, pretty high on the D-line. And then today, I was just like, oh, brother, like, this could be brutal. Yeah, um, it could be. I mean, uh, Elijah Simmons, he's Elijah Simmons. Like, he still looks good. Like, he is what he is, but he's just a nose plug, man. And, like, you can be a nose plug all you want, but that means everyone else around you has got to be good. I mean, Matthew Butler, I love that kid. I love how he practices. He's got a body. Like, he, yeah, he looks good. He yeah. looks, like, imposing. And yeah, yeah, he looks, yeah, he looks good. And he, he – um, another thing is, too, which we have to keep in mind, which I was thinking about, you never look as big in practice as you do in your game jerseys. That's true. Yeah, but anyway, so – I like Matthew Bell. I love how hard he goes. Even when we saw him get beat a couple of times, like he's still competing. He's still going hard. He's just a good guy. He's a good kid. I loved how he was competing. Um, it's funny because they have Byron Young and they have um, uh, Roman Harrison. Those guys are with the D line. I mean, usually, usually I would think they were with linebackers, but they're I, not. I think I think Byron did some stuff with linebackers. Yes. though. like he like I think he rotated back and forth. Where like, because I don't I don't think he was over there the entire time with one on ones. Right. With the deep with the no, D-line, I think O-line. he bounced back. But I'm yeah. just saying, like when I was watching Ronnie Garner take them through some one on one individual stuff. Yeah. Byron Young and Roman Harrison was with them. Yes. And so it's like those guys, you know, I. Definitely think they're going to be really good rush guys. You know, obviously we both love Byron Young. I mean, the guy, like I said, just from the look aspect. He's rocked up. I mean, he looks the part. Yes. And he plays like the part, and he, and he flies around like the part. But um, So it's just funny that he's with the D-line because I would expect him to be with linebackers. But anyways, like, he looked good. I mean, Roman Harrison, like, looks like a fine athlete. I mean, like, he – I mean, I wish he was bigger. I think I think in, in my whole thing that I'm gonna tie into everything is like we have guys that like look good, but like some of our guys, and I'll just give example like Morvin Joseph, we're not talking about linebackers yet, like Kip looks like a great athlete, but he also looks like and I hate to say it, but like they're who we're chasing is the Bamas and the LSUs and the Georgias and the Clemsons and the Ohio States, like Morvin just looks like a big safety for one of those schools. Yeah. Or like, you know what I mean? Like like that dude that was the the like hybrid safety guy that from Clemson that was drafted. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just, that, he was like number eleven. Yeah, Isaiah Simmons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he just looks like Morvin just looks like a good guy, like a good size athlete in a good frame, and but hell, he looks like he's almost like a you know an oversized like shooting guard in basketball like you know what i mean yeah. like he just i mean he's he's rocked up and muscle but he's just not a line he, he doesn't look like an imposing linebacker to me does that mean he's not going to be good no he could be very good mm-hmm. but I, my point to everybody is just like where we need to be is like our d linemen need to be imposing our linebackers need to be imposing and then our safeties are like whoa like a Morvin Joseph should be like what our safety's like. Brandon Turnage, we'll get to him. He's the transfer from Bama. Mm-hmm. He looked like a Bama deal B. Like yeah. he looked good. Yeah. Like good size, good length, good f- physical attributes. What number is he? Uh, hell, I don't know. Because I'm trying to remember yeah, if he, I saw him or not. Maybe 29, I think is. I mean, I just was. Uh, thank, okay. go- thank goodness, by the way, it's so funny because in practice, it's still hard to tell who people yeah, are. Yeah, their names. Thank, thank goodness they have names on their back, but sometimes the jerseys get messed up and stuff like that. But, yeah. um, but anyways, D line, like I said, like I don't know why I felt. I mean, I just felt really good at spring, but now maybe like you know, like I said, like I'm in all. I'm saying all body type and in and, and depth. So like. Maybe I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth because I was like, "Why are we upset?" Darrell Middleton left. He didn't give us anything last year. Yeah, but like just Greg. A, yeah, Greg Emerson, uh, Darrell Middleton. Like I'm not saying those guys are going to be studs for us, but just to get some depth. Yeah, literally because I like you said, I think it's a good way to put it. I just feel like there could be a drop off. Um, one guy who did impress me was um, um. Latrell Bumpus. Mm-hmm. I thought he looked super swaggy in his 11. Um, I thought he looked like a good size guy. He looked like a good athlete. Like, he looked like a good D lineman. Yeah. Um, 48 Brinkley. Um, he he was fine. I mean, he he looked good, but I would rather him be coming in, 
you know, as, uh, yeah, uh, Jaquan uh, Blakely, 6'2", 270. I mean, like a, size, that's what I'm saying. Player. Like, he, I loved his effort. I love how he played, but I'd rather him be coming in as a two. Yeah. Don't, we don't need a 270. And he might be coming in as a two. I would say so. Um, but, yeah, it was just – it wasn't the depth that – I mean, it just wasn't the bodies. And, like, you and I were talking, like, I don't even think – well, we don't even know if Aubrey Solomon's even on the team. Like, we were joking about it. Like, we know Greg yeah. went to Memphis and Darrell Middleton's at West Virginia. But, like, I never saw Aubrey Solomon out there. Like, I don't – No, I think he was he was the guy doing the jumps at the end when they were mm. doing up-downs. And that might have been right. You yeah. might have been right. Yeah, yeah. that probably so, was him. I don't know if he's, like – you know, dealing with some injury or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but, we don't, yeah, we don't know. But, um, it, I mean, I don't know. I just I, – I am so intrigued to watch this entire team against Bowling Green. I just wanted to go out there, get confidence, and handle business. But, like, this pit game, ooh, I mean, this is the most excited I've ever been because I don't know. But, you know, so – I mean, those games before are going to be very huge. And actually – Eric Ainge was at practice, and me and him talked, and I uh, was talking with Scott, and Eric was like, I remember when we played Georgia, Georgia Southern, Georgia State, we lost to him. He said that before that game, someone had told him they were running through stuff for the next four opponents at practice. Yeah, it's And Eric Ainge was like, there's no way. He's like, shut up. There's no way they're doing that. No one would ever do that. Yeah. Like, you have to concentrate on who you're going to play. No right. one would ever put stuff in. Then it comes out they did, and they end up losing to Georgia Southern. And it's like, Well, that's why Perot's oh, not our head coach anymore. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly why they're not head coach. Now I see why they freaking lost. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you got to prepare for that opponent. Agreed. That, Agreed. I mean, if you start trying to bring in other teams into the prep for – like, you just get confused. You, yeah. you like – don't see the things that you should see. No, nah, what happens is when you don't respect who you're playing, you get punched in the mouth. That's yeah. So, but um, yeah, D line man, like I, let's say this: when during team stuff, there were it was very feast or famine. I felt like yeah, I, 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 fe- I felt like these quarterbacks had zero time to throw a lot. I mm-hmm. mean, I felt like the D line was eating in the backfield a lot. You know, and so one on ones, we were talking like one on ones. The D line would do well, and then the offensive line would do well. And so, like, I guess just look. I, I guess the eye test and watching and looking, I wasn't impressed with the D line. But during team drills, like, they did really well. Like the the defense, like the quarterbacks did not have a lot of time to throw at all. Yeah, and I mean so, that's, sometimes that's just like taking advantage of a confusion on the offensive line or tight ends or running backs blocking too. It's like. One on ones, it's your skill versus that man's skill. That's all it is. With and team, it's like oh, someone has a mental error, then you can take advantage of that, like not helping the guy next to him, not being a good bumper, all that kind of stuff. And I think they did do a good job with that. I think that's why, you know, the report coming out of the scrimmage was D line did so well because I think they did the same things that we saw today, mm-hmm. where they're just like taking advantage of the protection the offensive lines running and then, like there's a gap. You know, like you're running a slide and someone just takes off and doesn't give you like a hand or a little bump. As an offensive lineman, you're screwed. Like right. you're, you, you, like if it's a three technique and I'm a tackle, like I can't cut him off. I need help from the guard. If the guard doesn't help me, I'm, I'm fucked. Yeah. yeah. And I think that happens uh, more than you would think. Probably, probably. And, and unfortunately, well, we would never name names and we would never say anything, but we heard some not great things about the scrimmage. Yeah. I mean, we heard that the defense pretty much dominated, which is scary because we all know that the defense is probably – That's I mean, I we mean, said if the, that, if was the, our the, week, that was yes, our weak point. Yeah, if, if somehow the defense is a strong point in this team, I mean, that's like one or two or three win season. Yeah. Um, But – and I still trust it. Listen, I'm still very confident the offense is going to be good. I'm still, I, I, I really do trust that. I still believe it. Um, but from multiple people, we heard that it was pathetic and that the offense looked terrible. They only scored two touchdowns all day. Yeah. And, and the defense was, kudos to them. They were playing like maniacs and like they were running around with their hair on fire and stuff like that. So hey, you know what? Maybe that's a good thing. Get them some confidence. Let the, the and also a wake up call for the offense. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. I mean, just like 
like you said, like getting smacked in the mouth, like getting smacked in the mouth and being like, oh, we're not, like we actually yeah. have to put forth effort yeah, into this. On. Like pick it up. Yeah, yeah. like s- step up your play, step up your your film watching, step up your game, step up your understanding of what's going on. Like be better. Yeah. You know, perform better. Uh, also, I think offensively they're trying to figure out who plays where and yeah. what's the best lineup everywhere, like literally across the board. board. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a difference too, but well, I'll say this to finish up on D line. I felt great about him at spring and now I'm kind of like up in the air. I'm very excited to see him. I can promise you, I can promise everyone. There is no group of kids working harder on any football team in America right now than our D line is. That's true. Because I think it's a kudos to those guys that just they're there to work and Rodney Garner is pushing them. And they're, they were probably the hardest working group that I saw today on our entire team, you know. So um, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to watch them and I'm excited to see how they do. Um, linebackers, to jump into linebackers. Mm-hmm. Um, it, was, it was night and day difference and it was so much better today than it was at spring practice. Yes. Um, as a whole, we still, I'm still looking for some imposing dog linebackers. Um, it's a heck of a lot better, but still there was not one guy that I was like, that's imposing. Now, yeah. That doesn't mean, don't, don't hear me. Don't does, that doesn't mean that these guys can't be good and productive. Like Jawan Mitchell was there and it's a very, very nice to have him Yeah, and, um, uh, look good, you know, look good. Um, Jeremy Banks is always out there competing, looked good. Um, like I said, Morford Joseph looks like a heck of an athlete. I, I saw them using him off the edge some. I think they're like trying to find ways to get that that kid on the field because he just he's a good athlete. Um, but then the Mohan from Michigan, yep. um, Beasley, and uh, I'm a, we got the roster here. We know that we're not the greatest with some of these names and just and why the back of, we just back of the jerseys having names helped a lot it's hilarious you could ask me the entire roster when i was younger and i could tell you like that oh yeah but now so um yeah so aaron beasley the junior uh linebacker it says he's 6'1 225 i mean maybe i guess maybe yeah i mean but he i mean that's what you are right now oh well, i'm not 225 no I'm, pro- I'm trying to be a little guy i'm trying to lose weight so um but yeah, like, and he played fine, and he had some good plays. But it's just like he's not an SEC linebacker. That's the no, best way to put it. No, he's just not an SEC. Like I, I, size wise, size wise. I'm even so wondering, size. like, how big was Henry Toto? Yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I, I didn't yeah. ever thought he was like huge. Yeah. I don't think we've had like a imposing huge linebacker since AJ Johnson. Yeah, 100%. like Reeves, Jalen Reeves, Maven wasn't like huge. Darren Kirkman wasn't huge. Like. Yeah, I just so never saw it. it yeah, like so Aaron Beasley played a good amount today. Uh, made some nice plays. Um, you know, Morvin Joseph. They rotate. They rotated. I was telling Kyler because, like I said, you guys would know nothing about this team besides the offensive line. <laughs> if it wasn't because, like, I'm watching everything that I can and trying to see different stuff, and plus I enjoy watching the linebackers and. DBs, but they moved a lot of movage uh, linebackers. Oh, yeah. a lot. There was a lot of rotation. If I had to put my money on it, it's going to be Banks and Mitchell. Um, but they want to know if if Morvin can play. I mean, I saw Beasley a lot, like Mohan from Michigan. Mm-hmm. Like he's just a little guy. Like I didn't even see him too too much. I think he was forty one. Let me see if that's yeah. Oh no no. So uh, Aaron Willis is a freshman. Um, 6'1", 225, like I said, not very big. I mean, he didn't get a ton. Um, I saw Mohan <coughs> one time. I don't remember what number he was, but I saw name on his back. Like, it's like we we have, like, the best-looking, like, high school linebackers you could see. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like if you roll out with these guys in high school, you're like, okay, like, these guys are for East Tennessee. Like, okay, these guys got nice. I mean, they're all six foot, six one, you know, 220. Yeah. And I don't I know. Mean, for, I mean, for, for Willis, for Beasley, for Mohan. I don't know if that's like a change in the way the game is played or if that's just like Us we, right didn't, now. we yeah. didn't get got. Because even in the NFL, 
you don't necessarily see guys that are just massive individuals like right. Levante David for the for the Bucks. He's not massive. You right. know what I mean? He's probably 225, 230. Hell, I might just be I might be screwing this up for everybody because I'm just hoping to go out there and just see a bunch of freaking Al Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> like that's literally what you're looking for. And it just doesn't happen. And I'm not saying these guys can't be good. I'm just saying like the size difference from these other schools is like Yeah, well I uh, I mean maybe, but like think about it like this. No, you know the size is difference. Look, there is some size difference, but you we just talked to Kevin Simon for 10 minutes. Did you think Kevin was like taller than you by any means? I thought he might have been shorter than you. And yeah. how tall are you? 6'2", six 6'1"? Six six yeah. So he's six foot. When he was playing and you were a kid, I thought he was a freaking giant. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's just like sometimes it's not like he was probably six foot two thirty. I just had these bad visions of these freaking LSU, Bama, Georgia linebackers. I'm like, that's where we want to be. I understand. So that's, so that's like, what I want to see. But. But I, yes, but like Reggie Ragland wasn't that big for Bama. Yeah, I think Reggie. You played against him, so you yeah, would, <laughs> so you would know. But I, I thought he was. I thought he was a pretty big boy. Yeah. So, anyways, we're I mean, just getting Dante Hightower. Massive. massive. Yeah, massive, yes. massive. Um, so yeah, I mean. Like I said, there was a lot of movement. My my guy, PA Garland, I still love that boy swag. I still love how he plays. I mean, they were rotating Beasley, um, PA, uh, Jawan, uh, Bank, uh, Jeremy Banks. I mean, it was a lot of movement. So it's it's just nice to have a lot more numbers there now than what we had yeah. than what we had at spring. Um, but if I had to guess, it's going to be Mitchell and Banks, um, and then. Maybe after that, you know, we'll see what happens. Obviously, we're not watching film. All this is in one day and, you know, five-minute increments between these different periods. Yes. So, positive that, hey, it's better than it was in the spring, but, like, we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, I did – my favorite drill that I watched all day was the linebackers blitzing, uh, like the inside linebackers blitzing and the running backs having to pick them up. And Jabari Small, poor guy, he, he's probably going to be a good running back for us. And but he might—I mean, he might be the starter, honestly. Right. Just like watching him perform and like the snaps that he was getting, and just he's a—he's a good, smart running back, which is what you want. But pass protection. I mean, it's just you know you can be small and still put your neck in there and like you know do do what you can. Um, but man, it was tough. Like, uh, Jawan Mitchell went up against them and just nice move, step outside, oh, laid over top of him, got there. It was like, dang, I felt bad for Jamari Small. Then he goes up again, and unfortunately, I did not remember. It's hard to try to take notes and watch because these, I mean, it's going fast, so fast, 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 fast. That's why they film it. Right. So they can talk about it later. Correct. And so then the next guy just goes in and just decleats Jabari Small. Oh. I just felt so bad for him. Like, it was just a size thing. Yeah. You know, it was just a size thing. And so, um, and, 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 and when you're picking up a blitz as a running back, like, you're not, like, trying to go meet a guy head on. Like, you're kind of like. You got to be a little passive. Correct. That's... Correct. And so, but that was my favorite drill I watched. I thought it was good. Obviously, no one, like, D-back with, I mean, no one. You can't get around No, they guy. weren't getting around him. He's, he's, he's just big. He's bigger than the linebackers. Um, but uh, it was a good one to watch. I thought Morgan Joseph did have a nice little move in that drill. Um, I'm so glad they're working on that because I thought there were times last year just watching the games where Henry Toto or anybody else would come on a blitz and just run straight into the running back. Yeah. And it was just like you came with zero purpose. Like you had no idea what you were going to do once you got there. You ran straight into him. You let him block him. You didn't even look at him. You're looking at the quarterback while you're trying. It's just like – right. That's, it would piss me off because it's a waste of a blitz. Like, stay back in coverage and right. help. Right, right. Because if you're just going to come in there and just, like, thud up with a running back. Well, you're just taking you, – the, the running back did a job. Yeah, you're, yeah. Like, you're just wasting time. So, I'm glad they're working that drill because it's like, all right, linebackers, like, what do you have in mind when you're coming on that blitz? Like, what move are you going to do? Yeah. Like, what – like, you can do a bull rush. You can run through them if you want to run through them. But, like – do it with purpose. Right. Like if you're not, if you're not well, going to make a sack, if you're not going to do that, 
hit him hard. Right. And right. make him feel it. Right. Because it'll affect him later. Uh, so I say running backs don't want to be picking up. They do not want to pick that's up. That's the last thing they want to do. That's the last thing they want to do. So, And that's why I was impressed. Like when Juwan Mitchell was going first, and I was like, you know, I was like, all right, let's see what he does here. I thought he was just going to bull rush. Now I like Jamari Small smaller than him, and he hit him with the outside move, ripped over top of him, got there, and I was like, touche. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, like I always say, the object is he to was thinking. Yeah, make the tackle, like make the play, make the sack. And so, like you said, come with a purpose. If you know you can't get there, try to deplete him, make him feel it, like you yeah. said. Because um, in the next pass protection, he's like, oh, man. He's going to do it again. And all it takes with these running – because I saw it today. Some of these running backs were just not pumped about the drill. No. And they got whipped on, <laughs> on, on those reps. I'm, yes. not saying as, I'm not saying as a whole. Because if you're just not bringing it, like it, just being lackadaisical, you're tired, you're hot – you're like, man, I don't want to block this guy again, and that's all it takes. That's it. And that's a sack, change the game, whatever. So that's why we always talk about running backs. Like, it's very important. A, a coach has to trust you for pass protection. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyways, linebacker as a whole, um, thought they did some good stuff in pass coverage in seven on seven. Um, I, I thought they were flying around, doing well. Uh, once again, it was a group that I thought um, – you know, was competing hard and um, picking each other up. Yeah. Not as, We get to the DBs here in a second. Those DBs are like a band of brothers. Oh, yeah. Like, they, like, and it was cool to see. Yes. Because there's a lot of competition back there. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially with the transfers. Yes. It's just like. Yes. So, but yeah, linebackers, a heck of a lot better than the spring, but still probably a little ways off. No injuries will probably be okay throughout the season. If we have some unfortunate injuries, we might be, you know, a little bit tough. Um, and you know what? We'll, I'm excited to watch them on a Saturday on TV against other people because maybe it's my fault for just expecting everyone to be Al Wilson and whoever else. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that stuff honestly doesn't matter as long as you can play ball. It's just what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing is not where Tennessee wants to be. We want to be – a top five, top eight, top ten, top fifteen program competing for SEC championships. That's right. And so that's what that's what I'm talking about. That's what yes. I'm talking to. So, do you do you have anything else on the linebackers or? I, I agree with you. I mean, definitely want some more size, and I mean, it can only help. Like to be bigger, uh, you know, bigger, stronger, faster, bigger, stronger, faster. Yeah. It can only help. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I did see some times where there was like confusion when that seven on seven was happening in the linebacker core of them, like, oh, who am I bumping out to? Who am I covered? Mm-hmm. Like, that kind of stuff that's going on. Um, and like we said before, like, I don't know if that's offense setting up fast and making it confusing or defense not understanding what's going on. It, you know what I mean? Like, right. who's a – like, is it someone being really good or someone being really bad? Like, it's hard to tell when you're out there. Um but yeah, I mean, definitely a thousand billion times better than the spring. Yeah, yeah. Okay, DBs. Once again, I don't know how much you guys you even watch. <laughs> no. Honestly, like I try to go over there and watch like seven on seven and like maybe some one on ones, and then I look over and see the O line D lines one on ones. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Like, we'll see you. I'm going yeah. over here. I just feel bad because I just feel like I'm rambling on and doing the talking and stuff on this. That's stuff. fine. I mean, when I'm at practice, like I'm thinking, like, okay, he's over there watching that. I can watch this. That's and that's what we're trying to do. It's great that we're both there and then we can kind of come back and talk about it. Um, DBs. I loved what I saw today. Um, I thought in the spring they some one on, and I actually I don't even think they did one on ones today. Only one-on-one thing I saw was getting off blocks. Uh-huh. So it would be like a receiver and a DB. It kind of was like it looked like an Oklahoma drill. It's yeah. not anywhere like – like it's not – they're not – Full force. Yeah, exactly. And they're not taking the, the running back or the receiver to the ground. But it's basically like let's practice blocking and let's practice getting off blocks. I didn't see any actually routes on one-on-ones. But everything I saw, like seven-on-sevens, team stuff, bro, I thought – I was very impressed by the DBs. I think we're very deep there. I think they're – pretty darn good like from what I saw I mean I thought it was now it's going to be a really tough job for them 
because we all know you can be a great corner and a great DB, but if you don't have much help in front of you mm-hmm. and the quarterback guys all day, mm-hmm. I mean, you like we can go get open out there if the running back quarterback guy all day. Yeah, and and I, I I did kind of feel like because we were talking about the sacks, right? That like quarterback didn't have any time. Da, da, da. Like I felt like some of those things were covered sacks. We're mm-hmm. just like wide receivers are covered, no one's open, and that quarterback's just got to take off. Or take a sack. Yep. And that happened a lot where Milton, Hooker, Bailey all just like, okay, I guess I'm running yep. now. Yeah. 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 And that's, um, yeah, I just, so to say some names, I mean, it's it's going to be Alante Taylor. It's going to be Kenneth George Jr. Um, at the outside. It's going to be Theo Jackson in the star nickel slot position. It's going to be Trey Flowers and Tank McCall. I think everyone knows that. I think that's yeah, – I think Hayden can get some good time too. Well, I mean, and I, so – I so feel for, like I saw some some good stuff. Well, I thought I saw – so those – I thought the starters did well. Um, I love – it's so funny that all those guys are all competing for each other's spot. Yeah. And I felt like every play was – they were, you know, fired up. Like, let's go, boy. Like, great play. Like, that a way to be there. Like – coaching each other up, helping each other, um, supporting each other, like getting excited for each other. It was, it was dope to see. Um, so I thought it looked good. Uh, I was very impressed with our twos. So uh, Brandon Turnage from Alabama, like I see why he went to Alabama. Like he looks different than other guys. Like I told you guys in spring, Byron Young looks different. Yeah. He looks different. You can tell he's a different brand of athlete. Yes. And it's the type of athlete that we need at all positions. Brandon Turner, it's like he's long. He's he's good size. I think he runs well. Every time I saw him, I I thought um, he was in good position. Like, I was just impressed. I thought he did good. Uh, Kamal Hayden, uh, who was a transfer, um, I thought he I thought he did well. I was I was impressed with – Kind of what I saw. I saw some jumping routes during those seven on seven. Like I, I like really going after the ball, hitting the guys as they were trying to come on like little slants and stuff like that. It's just like I'm not giving you any cheap, right? Cheap balls. Like right. I'm not, I'm not making this easy for you. So yeah, and so I was, I was impressed with both of them. I was very impressed with our second safeties, and so it was um, uh, Christian Charles. That's a freshman, six one one eighty six. I, th- I was very impressed with him. Like, I thought he did well and was in his position. Like, I didn't see him get beat. Like, I was impressed. Like, I had to really watch and thought maybe he was running with the ones. Um, but it was him. And then my dude, um, Tamarian McDonald from Whitehaven. Oh, yeah. So, he was 21, I guess, in the spring game, I think. Yeah. Now he's 12. Like, I think he had two picks or one pick. And, in, in, I mean, I was just very impressed. Like, I felt like they were under control. They were good athletes. They were in the spot they needed to be. They, you know, whatever. Now, obviously, I'm not getting to see these guys break down and make open field tackles or how their mm-hmm. angles are. It's more coverage-based stuff. And that's the stuff, too, is it, it's a smart way to practice where you're not going full force and full contact. So, like, DBs coming from 20 yards away when you're coming up to the running back to make a tackle – you throw your hands, but you don't actually make the tackle. Correct, correct. Because it's like, we don't want anybody getting hurt. We don't want, like, huge contact out right now. Like, we want everybody to stay safe and healthy. So, it's like, did you get to your spot? Correct. Is more of the teaching points right now. Which can leave something to be desired because you're like, is he going to make that tackle in the game? Is he going to be able to do what he needs to do once we get out there? Correct. Because in practice, you can look great. And then in a game, somebody throws a little, you know, a nice little just a hitch. We'll say just a nice little hitch or a nice little comeback. And if the DB misses and that safety misses that tackle, that 14, 12, 10-yard hitch route just went to a 48-yard bomb. And we're like – so so tackling is so important. Angles are so important. So I didn't get to see a bunch of that, and that's fine. Obviously – we're not going to practice that way. You can't practice that way. No, you don't hear. Um, but You'll I was have some live periods. Yeah, but. but I was I was impressed with the second team. I mean, if you had to put Brandon out there and Kamal Hayden out there, and like I said, uh, McDonald and um, who was the the one of the freshman who I mentioned, Charles. 
I thought they all looked good and they all played well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Like, I've always liked Delonte Taylor's swag. I like um, – he's a vocal leader. I like his attitude. I think he really cares. He really wants to be good and all that stuff. But, like, I think Kenneth, Kenneth George Jr. might be the best corner on our team. Like, I just think he's going to be very, very solid. Like, I'm – no disrespect, but like I, I'm not gonna be shocked if Alante goes out and has a a good year. But like I was saying, no disrespect, like if he goes out and gets benched because hmm. he's just an aggressive player. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you can't let people behind you. Yeah. And so like, if halfway through the year, if, you know, Brandon's out there, Kamal Hayden or someone else is out there, like, I'm not gonna be surprised by that. But I just think Kenneth George is a good sized kid. I mean, this thing says he's five eleven, two oh three. When I'm kind of not impressed with some of the size from the D-line and linebackers, like I'm impressed that's a good-sized corner, and he looks yeah. like a good-sized corner when he's right next to me. Yeah. And um, and so, I, I, you know, I could see him being good. I thought Theo um, Jackson was doing – he was good. I mean, Theo, Tank, and Flowers, like you can definitely tell they're leaders and they want each other to play well and do well. And so that was great to see. Um I have to I have to mention um, uh, Romello Edwards. Like I, I'm just like it was funny. I saw some tweets of his and I really appreciated them. Like I thought like for a young guy that was some pretty mature stuff to say. Uh-huh. And so I wanted to see him in practice and I was very impressed with him at corner. I thought he did good. What tweets are you talking about? Um, talked about one like that. You know, playing this game and 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 whether he meant playing for the University of Tennessee or not, but just playing this game, like it's it's a it's a blessing. Like not everyone gets an opportunity, yeah. and like I thought that was great for him to say. Like you're right. Like this, so many people take stuff for granted. So many people think that they just deserve it, and that's yeah. not the case. And yeah. so I caught that, and I th- I just liked it. So I wanted to watch him, and I thought he did very well at corner. I thought he did a good job. Um, had some nice breakups. Was pretty sticky D. And um, so I, and good, you know, decent sized kid. And then my man, um, it was one of the same guys that I saw, and I took a note. Oh wait, 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 wait. Yes, Tyus Fields. Tyus so, Fields. so Tyus Fields is number seventeen. He was one of the guys that got in the fight in spring. But I loved mm-hmm. his, I loved his attitude. I love how kind of like ferocious he was, competing like a maniac, pretty physical. And today he had a nice break on a ball, had a nice pick, and then he got me to be a clown. And what I mean by that is like let my hypeness come out and get excited. Let your emotions come out. Yeah, yeah, I mean he caught a guy. I mean he came in, broke it up, and gave him dude the shoulder. And I was like, woo, let's go! Like I mean I was <laughs> yeah. I was on the other side of the field, and I was like, and the DBs were on this side, and he was actually playing opposite side. And I said it, and I was like. Had to like look around, make sure someone's like, all right, who is that guy? <laughs> and why is he a practice? You know, coach, you know, obviously Coach Martinez and some of those other DBs like didn't notice, but I was like, let's like, let's go. Like, that was a nice little pop. Like, yeah. I just it's the second time I've been to practice, and it's the second time I noticed him. Yeah. And so he's only a um, you know, he's a retro sophomore. I, I think he could have another like a good little career for us, helping us out, whether it's at outside corner, inside corner, whatever. I mean, he's got some years, so I was just very impressed with the DBs and the depth that we have. And I hope they are as good as we need them to be. Yes. And so, like I said, practice, DBs can look a lot better than they are because they're not making open field tackles. And if your D-line's not that great, you're going to be left in coverage a lot. So, (sighs) you know, but. And not even like that great, just like not a lot of depth. If your D-line's freaking tired, so they can't do anything. You're exactly, like, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. That's my fault. Forever. Yeah, and you're exactly right. That's my fault for saying that. Our starters could be very good. Yeah. But we might not know it because they're playing 30 more staffs than they need to. Yeah, than they should be doing. Like, they should be. Because um, that's like, it's so, like, corner and offensive line is almost the same where, like, you don't sub. Like, no one freaking subs on the offensive line. Right. No one subs at corner. But wide receivers sub the entire time and defensive line subs the entire time. Right. Just with how much running they're doing. So it's like as a defensive line, you need depth. You need depth, 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 and you don't need it to fall off. And same thing at wide receiver. You need depth and you can't have it fall off. Like it's mm-hmm. like 
the second guy to come in for that other guy has to be able to run just a crisp of a route and get open just as well. Like you can't just have three guys as wide receivers right. that are good. Like you need six. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, um, I still really appreciate these coaches on the deep, on the, all the coaches because once again I caught Rodney Garner do it once, and I think I caught I don't know if it was Coach Banks or if it was the linebackers coach, but like I just like that they coach guys like whether it's on the D line, whether it's Matthew Butler or Elijah Simmons, or whether it's some guy that I have no idea his name. He's definitely a walk on, and Rodney Garner and he wasn't even yelling at this point, shockingly. But he was coaching him up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he was taking time to, like, at least put effort into coaching that kid up. And, um, like I said, I love Coach Martinez and how he coaches. And um, he's got a couple young, younger, like, GAs or assistants. I mean, what the safeties guy, he doesn't even look like he's out of high school. And he's, like, an assistant coach. And he was out there coaching and doing it up. But I just appreciate that they – put effort into everybody. Yeah. Um, as a defense to wrap up, I'm pumped that we have Jawan Mitchell. Um, I'm, pumped, I'm pumped that we have some more linebacker depth. I'll say this. Overall, we'll say on a 1 to 10, when I left spring practice about the defense, I was, like, really worried. I was like – Two. Yeah, two or three out of ten. And now I go back and I'm like, well, I'm a little bit more worried about the defensive line than I was because I thought they were going to be a really strong point for us. I think we lost a couple guys. And I think when we went to practice, Elijah – wait, no, Elijah was practicing. I felt like there was one or two guys that weren't practicing. And it was like, oh, we're still doing okay for not having all the guys I I just felt like the numbers and the size and everything just looked better. And so so I feel like even with me being a little – maybe more worried about D-line now as I thought they were going to be a strength of this team, and now I'm kind of like, uh, I still feel ultimately better about the defense as a whole yes. because of the DB depth and because of the new linebackers we brought in just for depth. Yep. You know, so, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Where would you put them? Because you just said two or three. That's what I'm saying. Time. I would say so two, and now we're saying all that, like I'm probably at like a five now. Okay. Yeah, so I'm probably like a five now. And just because, like I said, mainly just because the linebacker core literally looks from like it's a random East Tennessee high school team to now like a – It's a complete turnaround. I mean, the the podcast we had right after spring practice, what you were saying about that linebacker core. I just felt bad. Compared to now, it's it's complete, complete turnaround. Complete turnaround. We just – it's like – it's like what I'm – I guess what I'm trying to say is it was a complete turnaround, but we still have a long way to go. Yeah. Just not as long. Well, when you yes, when you compare like you were saying earlier, to the Bamas, to the LSU's, to the Georgias, to the Floridas, to the Clemson's and Ohio States, it's like, all right, like we gotta get. There's a reason why we are as big as point favorite versus Bowling Green as Bama is versus us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. That's how it's seen. Yeah. Like we are Bama's Bowling Green, and that's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But, you know, it's one game at a time. It's one season at a time. And not to sound cliche, but I, 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 I like Coach Hype. I would like to play for a guy like that. And I hope he's successful here. Obviously, I hope all the coaches are successful here because I want us to be good. But, yeah. like, I, I like him. I like him. I like him, too. I like him a lot. And today we didn't even talk with him. No. Today it was funny. We were – well, yeah, we were kind of, like, leaving the complex. And, of course, us, like, players are doing all their pre-work – pre or post uh, – Practice stuff like showering, eating, ice tub, getting dressed, getting back over to Stokely Hall to sleep. Yeah. Coaches were already in their offices eating, watching film, talking, all this stuff. And we're, it was so funny. Like, we're just walking down. Uh, we go upstairs in the facility. We're walking down the coach's office. No one's out there. Or we walk in and Cody Burns walks by us. Yes. And his head's in his phone and he's just going to, like, go coach up or do whatever. And it's just kind of quiet. And me, I'm like – Run around like looking at everything like, and there and then Hypel comes out and he just like sees us and like he just he's not even concerned and he's just like all right I, you know he just walks he, he just walks into another room to like, like I guess they're where they're supposed to be yeah he's like, like a, who are these idiots but <laughs> yeah. obviously he knows you but um so but yeah it was uh, yeah it was fun so I guess we'll uh, that's it for defense now yes we will wrap up uh, that's it for defense so. Like, subscribe, 
comment, rate, review, follow, all that good stuff. You know, we're on every platform for podcasts. We're on YouTube. Uh, so check us out. Tell everybody about us. Uh, as always, main sponsor, betonline.ag. So if you're betting on any games, especially these NFL games coming up, uh, get in on that. Uh, follow us on social media at Kyler Kerberson, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, at rbacon26 on Twitter for read. And we now have a Twitter for the podcast, Believe in Tennessee Football. So uh, Believe in Tennessee. Believe in Tennessee is the at. Uh, so you can follow us there too. Uh, Reed's running that one, so we'll see if he can keep it under control over there. Uh, but uh, yeah, should be great. And uh, if you want to contact us, yeah, so believe in Tennessee football at gmail.com and phone number 865 322 9232. Uh, so yeah, as always, go balls. <laughs>